part of Houston, Texas, the home for the 2019 Southland Conference Football Media Day for the second consecutive day. Great to have you with us as we continue on with our morning session all morning long. We'll break for lunch and then we'll be back with six more programs coming up in the afternoon. We just heard uh, from the Colonels from Nichols right now. It's time to talk Cardinal football UIW up next here at the 2019 Football Media Day. Take a look at some of the numbers now. 17 starters returning, eight on offense, six on defense. Last year, an impressive opening year for head coach Eric Morris, six and five overall, six and two in the Southland Conference, tied for first place. And uh, coming up, season opener at UT San Antonio. Conference opener will take place September 21st when the uh, Cardinals head to Huntsville to take on Sam Houston State. All right, a pleasure to be joined here on stage by the head coach of UIW, making the trip over from San Antonio. And we'll begin now with a few opening remarks. Please welcome uh, Eric Morris. Eric, good to see you again, and I know you're looking forward to a new season. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Um, hope everybody had a great summer. This is always a bittersweet time, in my opinion. Um, a little bit bitter, just because I've gotten to spend a ton of time this last month with my three-year-old son and my wife and a lot of family, so we don't get as that luxury as football coaches to do that year-round to some people. And, um, you know, I love to fish and golf, and my golf game's getting pretty good right now, and I'll put the clubs back in the closet for six months, uh, starting next week. And then, obviously, it's sweet just because you get the opportunity to, to get your team back together. Um, nothing like 105 kids walking into a room, you know, on, on the 1st of August, and everybody having the same ambitions, goals. Um, great to see the big smiles walking in and, and ready to work. And so, um, you know, I, I think me being a, a first year head coach last year, it took me about a year and a half kind of to feel like I was, had the program headed in the right direction. All the culture was set, um, you know, from the strength and conditioning program to nutrition, um, just to the everyday walk of life with these kids and, and to, de uh, to continually develop these kids on and off the field. Um, you know, I, I think that our staff does an incredible job of establishing relationships with these kids. I think the kids will talk about it in a little bit. And, um, you know, throughout this whole entire offseason, we've had, a, you know, every Wednesday, we, we call it Be a Man Wednesday. So we bring people in from the community um, all over the state of, of Texas. Most of them are, are from San Antonio and, and just share different walks of life. I mean, we have anybody from, uh, you know, people that are involved in FCA and the church around, around San Antonio all the way up to, you know, some professional athletes that, that I had the privilege of, of playing with. And so really teaching these kids, um, you know, how to, how to walk the walk each and every day and, and how football really carries over to, to their everyday walk of life when they're done with it. So there's so many things that these kids learn um, throughout the course, you know, the time management, accountability, responsibility, all that stuff's key. And, but I still think today's age with the millennials and the age of the cell phone, that um, sometimes they struggle making the transition in, into the working world once they get done with college. We have a bunch of kids with uh, degrees that are doing great things, but they don't have those social skills to get out there and, and really present themselves in, in a good manner. And so that's something we've kind of worked on throughout the course of this spring. Um, I'll get a little bit more into the football side of it. Excited about where we're at, um, both on the offense and defense side of the ball. Obviously, you know, we got a bunch of offense alignment on the, um, on the preseason team. We got five starters returning, and, um, you know, the, the crazy part about that is, is there's a good chance that two of them don't start. We got two freshmen that uh, redshirted last year that uh, are, are pushing really hard. So, you know, everybody in the outside world thinks, you know, that's – the, the spots that should be solidified right now. And really, if you, if you had a deep um, eye into our program, you'd realize that's really not true. But um, excited where we're at on offense. Uh, got a great quarterback coming back in John Copeland. Um, you know, he got banged up at the end of last year, had successful surgeries. He's worked his tail off getting back. Um, the undeniable leader of this team, uh, you know, carries himself with a lot of moxie. Um, a lot of swagger, and, and our kids are just drawn to him. And he, and he, you know, like any great quarterback I've ever been around, which I've been, you know, um, privileged to be around, Case Keenum, Patrick Mahomes, Baker Mayfield, all these guys. So they all have the uncanny ability to really raise the level 
of the whole entire team, um, and not any, not even just on offense. I mean, when you uh, see that you know he's leading the the voluntary workouts in the summer, the whole entire summer, and, and people were out there um, getting work in, and, and he's kind of become a, a player coach. So happy to have him with us. Um, receivers, kind of the only position where we lose two guys that went for over a thousand yards for us. We're going to be really young at that position. Um, you know, I like our talent level, but but every coach in here knows that experience is key. And so it'll be key for us to get those guys a bunch of experience throughout the course of this fall camp and, um, and get the timing down with them. Have a really good running back coming back in Amir King, um, signed a couple of junior college kids in the backfield that, that should help us. Um, moving over to the defensive side of the ball, we have six returners on defense. Um, back in, we have quite a bit of kids returning. And uh, the front seven is kind of where we lost a lot. We have two defensive ends that are playing in camp right now um, in the NFL. And then our, our linebacker, Silas Stewart, who was an all-conference guy last year, is in camp with the Ravens right now, just signed a contract. So um, we lose a little bit on defense, but um, I couldn't be more proud of the coaching staff on that side, really filling some holes. Um, you know, I, I thought in spring ball, you know, we were a lot better defensively, although we lost all those guys than we were during the fall. So um, Coach Deason continues to do an incredible job at, at finding different ways to use different kids' skill sets. Um, I think we'll look a little bit different defensively this year, um, scheme-wise, just trying to play into the hands of the kids that we have on this team. Um, the one thing that we tried to improve in recruiting this year was speed. Um, you know, I, I thought when we first got there, uh, that we really lacked team speed. So that was one of the major things we tried to attack in recruiting this year is, is to gain speed on, on both sides of the ball. Um, so, you know, I, I think this conference has changed dramatically in the, in the last two or three years. I mean, this year, I mean, there, there's two really good coaches that we had to the league that I don't want to play this year. Kobe Carthel's done an incredible job everywhere he's been in the state of Texas. I mean, a, a heck of a ball coach. And then Sterling Gilbert as well. I mean, they're both, both uh, West Texas guys, which I appreciate. You know, uh, Colby from Friona and then Sterling from Abilene. And, and I'm, a, I'm a little boy from Shallow Water, a little 2 A's town out in, in West Texas. So uh, really look forward to getting those guys in the league. I know they'll really improve the play of their squads. Um, you know, we've got a couple kids that I brought today. One of them's TJ Wright. Um, a kid that um, I want to brag on just a little bit before we turn this over for a couple questions. But um, a kid, when I got there, um, I asked him, you know, after the first week or two, noticed him working hard in off-season workouts, always on time, yes sir, no sir, um, had a 4.0, I mean, just did everything right. And I asked him, you know, hey, are you on scholarship? And he said, yes sir, I am. And about a week later, I, I get all my scholarship breakdowns and, you know, he's getting like books, like $800 covered of the, you know, 40-something thousand dollars it, it cost to go to school there. And so, um, uh, needless to say, it took him, you know, four or five months to get my attention. Uh, he's now in full scholarship. He has a 3.8. Um, you know, he has a plan where he's going to get his medical school paid for. Just an incredible human being. I mean, I want to recruit a thousand kids like TJ. And, um, and you have, have kids that do things right on and off the field, carry themselves uh, the way you want your whole entire team to carry themselves on campus. Uh, when they communicate to teachers, I get email after email about, uh, about what a great young man he is. So really happy to have these two kids at the helm leading our, our charge this year and um, looking forward to a great 2019 season. All right, Coach Morris, appreciate those opening comments. If you have a question uh, for Coach, raise your hand, and we will uh, have a couple of microphones uh, going around. We got one right here. Ariana Vidia, Houston Chronicle. Uh, with last year's standings in mind, and you, you do guys have a lot of uh, returners on the offense, do you think that will kind of give you guys an upper hand in the conference, and how? Yeah, I mean, we, we got to, and, and I think, you know, as a coach, finding out how to handle success is one of the hardest things that you'll ever do. Um, you know, there's a reason why they pay 
Nick Saban and Lincoln Riley and Urban Meyer so much money is because, you know, they have this ability to get to the top, but then to sustain that at the top is is really tough, and especially in this conference where we're at right now. So, you know, that's been a challenge for us. I think our culture is getting better and better, and I think we continue um, to stress the little things and, and, and mental toughness and all these things that, that we have to ignore it. I mean, last year I stood up here, and I think we are picked second to last, and, and none of this stuff matters. I mean, what matters is, is if we're going to go back to work the way that we did last year as a team, and, and we're going to be able to grind it out throughout the course of, of the whole entire month of August and in order to prepare to put ourselves in these situations to win games. And so, uh, so yeah, I think having success is, is, um, is obviously a great thing, but finding out a way to sustain it is, is super hard. Got a question there on the left side. Hey, Coach, uh, Robert Krause, RCFB, um, former Texas Tech player, you talk a little bit about how Coach Leach has influenced your uh, your coaching in terms of not only play calling but program development. Yeah, um, a lot, and and you know even more so than than Coach Kingsbury. I got the the great opportunity. You know when Mike Leach got hired at Washington State, I was the first assistant that he hired. So we flew up to Pullman together, and and one of the most valuable things I've ever learned is I got to sit there and watch how he hired all the guys on his staff, how he put together the structure from day one of, of his off-season program, um, how he handled discipline within his, within his program. So that was something I got to see firsthand. Um, I took a lot out of it. Um, you know, I, I used a bunch of his techniques um, as, as far as putting my staff together and, um, and the way kind of we, we got our program rolling throughout the, the stage of that first year. So, um, so, yeah, just, I mean, he's a guy that's a, a phone call or a text away. We probably talk once a week still to this day, um, especially in the summertime. He spends a whole summer in Key West. So, um, you know, you can always catch him um, in the afternoon. He sleeps till about noon and, and goes to bed about 3 a.m. So, uh, so that's a good window for me when he's on the East Coast. And uh, he's, he, it's easier when he's on the West Coast. It's hard for me to stay in touch with him just because his time schedule. But, yeah, I mean, forever grateful for, for what Mike's done for me, um, both as a player and as a coach. Uh, I, uh, David Berry, Lake Charles American Press. Uh, I guess it's kind of cliche, but you guys have gone pretty much overnight from being a hunter to being a hunted uh, in the conference. H how do you, as a coach, deal with that and uh, transfer that to your team? Yeah, and, and I'm a believer in talking to it about it with your players. I mean, some coaches, I think, just want to hide it and not talk about it and act like it's not there. But I'm a guy that will get up in front of our whole entire team and, and, and tell them, and tell them, hey, this is what it is. And, um, you know, for us to have the mentality, and that's what we wanted last year. I mean, if you could uh, rewind it all and, and say, hey, this is where we're going to be a year from now as a program, um, I'd say that we're on track and everybody would take it. So um, I think it's a positive thing. You've got to spin it to where it is positive, not negative. At the same time, I, I don't think that these kids these days need to feel any kind of extra stress. You, you spin it into a positive. I think any time you start focusing on things that are negative, then they start to feel your negativity come down that you're worried. So confidence is key. I mean, that's something that I've always, always um, – you know, felt was one of my strong suits, both as a player and as a coach, is, is we're going to go in with a ton of confidence. And then, you know, with, with this conference and being FCS level program, I think, you know, you got to look at us only having 63 scholarships. Um, that was one of the biggest difference, me coming down from FBS to FCS, is, is you got to stay healthy. Um, you know, I, I think that at the top end, we're really good, and, and we have a couple players go down, and, and you're saying, uh-oh. Um, so, you know, I think that you got to look at it from the standpoint that you want to keep your players healthy, um, just strictly from a numbers standpoint. Coach, Josh Criswell, Huntsville Item. Um, just with all the success over the past year, how much have you seen the excitement and support around the program in the San Antonio area grow, you know, from the time whenever you came in to where we are today? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's grown rapidly. And kind of like Coach Rebo said, you know, we took the approach, if, if you build it, then they'll come. And so, um, you know, it's something, you know, we haven't um, 
been doing anything crazy uh, out in San Antonio. I mean, we've kind of kept to ourselves and, and worked hard, kept our head down and, and grinded out. And then once we had a product that we could go out there and sell, you know, I think this off season we spent a little bit more time at getting out into the community um, with a product and, and trying to get our numbers up, our fan base, uh, season ticket sales, all those things. Because these kids work extremely hard and, and they deserve to, to play in front of great crowds. And it was kind of funny last year. I mean, we started our season opener, you know, had probably four or 5,000 people there. By the end of the thing where we're playing meaningful games, you know, I mean, we have, we have close to 15,000 people there. So, um, so, yeah, I mean, our marketing team, our athletic director, um, you know, everybody has done a great job at coming up with a strategic game plan um, for us to get out in the great city of San Antonio and, and put together a game plan to, to get more fans in, in the seats. All right, I have time for a couple more questions in the back here. I see Morrell, Port Arthur News. Uh, Coach, you said there was a one and a half year process for you uh, to uh, turn an incarnate work football around. What was the biggest X factor in that process? And then secondly, you might have just alluded to it, but do you think the San Antonio community has really taken to this incarnate work football team? Yeah, the biggest X factor is I, I surrounded myself with a lot of smart men. Um, that helped me get to where we're at right now. And so I didn't have all the answers. I, I leaned on those guys constantly, every single day, asking questions and, and collectively coming up with the right answers. And I made a ton of mistakes in my first year. I'd be the first one to admit it. You know, I'm, I'm a guy that takes a lot of notes and, and tries to really figure out, you know, the things we did good and the things we did bad. And so, um, so yeah, it, it, you know, it wasn't, you know, an X factor would be, me having, you know, 20 plus guys in our building that are super smart and I let them do their job every day. And, um, and we collectively come up with game plans together, uh, both, you know, for a football game and, and then for us, you know, setting up a schedule um, as far as what we want to accomplish that year. And um, your second part, would tell, tell me your second part one more time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, San Antonio obviously is, you know, uh, the eighth largest city in the United States, um, ton of people. Um, and in South Texas, I mean, everybody loves football. So they're, they're big time Cowboys fans down there. Um, and so we're trying to get them to, to come watch us on Saturdays and then uh, be able to still drive up and, and watch the Cowboys uh, over the weekend. So, yeah, I think that, that our support in San Antonio has, has obviously grown. I mean, we have four major TV stations there that do a great job of covering us. Um, and so, you know, I think the coverage um, throughout that and, and in our newspapers has steadily helped us grow um, over the course of the last year and a half. All right, one more question here in the front. Coach, you mentioned trying to keep the, the players healthy, and I know that you finished spring ball the first week of March. Can you talk a little bit about that, why you pl had spring ball so early, and how that plans to keep the players healthy throughout the season? Yeah, we went spring ball super early. Um, you know, the, the week after signing day, we started it, and we got it all done um, before spring break. So it's going to be a thing, you know, we'll look back on it, and, and it's either going to be a really good, smart decision I made, or it's going to be the worst decision I've made since I've been here. So we'll see if it worked. The main reason I wanted to do it early, um, more so than injuries, is, is I kind of went back and reflected on the season and the games we lost. Um, and, and the games we lost last year, Nichols and Montana State, I thought were, uh, were better up front than us. And I, I thought they were able to lean on us. And even Lamar, to an extent, you know, was able to establish a run game late in the game. Um, Nichols was able to do that. In the second half, I just thought we were – we weren't big enough or strong enough on both sides of the ball. And so, um, you know, this approach allowed us to get done with it and then spend more time in the weight room, uh, trying to add a little more strength, a little bit more bulk, um, you know, really slowed down the running and, and beefed up the nutrition so we could put on some good weight uh, while we're still in the weight room. So we'll see if it works. I mean, our, our kids' numbers are up in the weight room. Our weights are up. Um, and, and so that's mainly the, the main reason why I did spring ball early this year. All right, before we toss it over to Carly, what the defense was able to do as far as creating turnovers a year ago, I believe you had at least one in every game and you led FCS with 29. That says a lot. Yeah, I think it was key, and especially just where we were as a program 
And, um, you know, we kind of got on a roll offensively, and, and we were able to score points um, pretty fast at times. And so anytime you have an explosive offense and, and just adding the times we get the ball um, is key. So, you know, I, I think it played into our hands as a, as a complete team last year. Um, you know, I think this year, obviously, we'll, we'll take all the turnovers. But I think as a whole, defensively, I, I think we're going to be a better squad. And so um, I don't think we're going to have to rely on as much. Just because, I mean, you never know. I mean, being able to lead the league and, I mean, the, the nation in turnovers every year, obviously, is not going to happen. So, um, yeah, it, it was great for us, especially in a in year one program. And um, was super proud to, to get that ball. And, you know, I'm still calling the plays on offense. So, um, <laughs> Anytime you can get you know a, a ton of turnovers, I think that helps make, you to, makes me happy. There you go. Yeah, it was it was uh, a really great experience for our kids um, to have the ability to fly up to to a storied program like Montana State. Um, you know, to see their culture. Um, the one thing they didn't like is that it was snowing in 18 degrees outside. <laughs> so um, a little bit different for us, but you know, just to to get that experience um, that we can hopefully relate back to um, in a year and you know hopefully we can get back it was, it was a great time but obviously you know we weren't able to, to come out victorious but I think we learned a lot from it so um, yeah. you know it'll be something that the next time we're able to uh, make the playoffs I think that our kids will feel a little bit more comfortable and hopefully we can host the game uh, next time and not have to fly all the way to Montana. I mean what an opening year did you envision that stepping into a program and, and knowing what you needed to accomplish did you envision that's the way it, it would turn out here postseason yeah probably not I mean I'd be lying if, if I said that you know we thought we we're going to come in and, and be able to have yeah. a share of the title so um, but just a, a tribute to our kids I mean they came in they bought in um, you know I think our, our coaches uh, coached extremely hard they're great teachers um, and and we were able to improve in a ton of things in our program and anyway, our our GPA has risen almost a whole entire point since we've gotten there and so um, watching these kids kids succeed is one of the biggest joys I get out of coaching. I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun to watch them be able to make good grades, eventually get their degree, and, and then have success on the field at the same time. So, um, yeah, we'll continue to, to coach and teach really, really hard, and, um, and hopefully we we'll continue to have the same success. All right, last question. Uh, ask you about the schedule. You get going on August uh, 31st. You open at UT San Antonio, so a little City rivalry there to, to kick off this season. Talk about your schedule in general, specifically that opener at UTSA. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't call it a, a rivalry yet. I mean, uh, has the potential. There, yeah, right. Um, so obviously, have a ton of respect for that program. What Frank Wilson's been able to do there. Um, they had a down year last year, but um, they got a ton of returners coming back. Their quarterbacks coming back. A, a kid I recruited out of high school is extremely dynamic, um, explosive. So. We'll have our hands cut out for us. You know, for, for me, I'm just excited the fact that our kids get a play in, in the Alamo Dome, um, such a great venue uh, that's right down the street from our campus. You know, there'll be 25, 30,000 people there. So just a great experience for them. I mean, they'll be super jacked up. I know I'll probably have to calm them down a little bit before that game. So, um, so yeah, we're excited about the opportunity. It's definitely going to be a challenge, a great program. Um, you know, anytime you play an FBS opponent, obviously, um, you got your hands full. And, and lastly, you got your first look at the conference and everybody you're going to be facing and what this league is all about. What's your takeaway after one year of watching this league? Um, yeah, a lot better than, you know, in, in the previous years, I really, we had played Stephen F. Austin, uh, Central Arkansas, and Sam Houston all when I was at Texas Tech for those five years. So really, I've got to see those five teams. But from the top to bottom, I wasn't able to see it. And so just came away really impressed. Um, a lot of great coaches um, that I think are, are fundamentally sound. And then, you know, I, I know going in through this offseason and really being able to dig in and dive into to some self-scouting, what we did well, what we did bad against them, um, you know, it definitely is going to be challenging for us. I mean, there's got to be a lot of adjustments that we have to make as coaches uh, so we can compete at a higher level. But, um, you know, like I said earlier in my open statement, I think we added two, um, you know, world-class coaches into it. Uh, that'll do a great job. That'll continue to, to shift the, uh, the play up. All right, very good. Great conversation with head coach Eric Morris and his players from UIW. Good luck this season, coach. Look forward to seeing you play. Thank you, sir. When we come back.